On today's video, we are sharing our home-centered days here at the homestead. We all long for home. If we stay in one place very long, we start making a home. A home-centered life is one that I have embraced for the last 35 years. I am a longtime homemaker. I have made a career out of homemaking, so home has always been central to my life. A home-centered life is essential to a homesteading life. The family, the animals, the bread, the garden, all need daily nurturing and thrive on routine. Being home, moving throughout the daily rhythms of life, gives us a sense of security and expectations. The happiest, most productive way I can navigate the demands of my family and farm is by staying home. It seems all children, young and old, love coming home to a mom in the kitchen in an orderly, cozy home. As a mother of grown children, the moments I treasure most are the memories spent at home. The busyness of home is a good kind of busy, not the stressful busy when you are away from home. What a blessing it is to be home. I want to share with you this Bible verse from Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in our doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I feel like sometimes homemakers feel like, you know, they just do the same thing over and over and they get really tired and they don't know that they're even accomplishing anything. But let me tell you, you are. Every day that you are working, taking care of your family, you are doing good and you will reap a harvest. Here on our homestead, daily attention to our milk is very important. I have to keep it rotated. I have to keep up with, um, you know, the age that it is because I make a lot of cheese and that does matter in cheese making. So it's a daily attention and I have this built into every morning after we milk. I look through my milk refrigerator and I make my plan for the day of what I need to do to organize our milk. When I put our fresh milk away every day, I try to put it beside a jar of cold milk in the refrigerator so just help it cool down a little faster. So I try not to put two jars of warm milk beside each other. Most routines are daily, but some are seasonal. Every year, we try to use our cream pea field. We try to get that ready to, to graze some of our Jersey cows in the winter. So Mr. Roofer is shredding today. He will be planting triticale there next week. And that should extend some of our grazing and oh, anything we can do to help out with our cattle grazing. Right here we have electric fence and we're just moving it every day and letting them eat some of the cream peas that we had planted this summer. I'm mixing this batter about 9 p.m. at night to make a sourdough chocolate cake tomorrow. 
This cake is going to be a birthday cake because we are celebrating birthdays this weekend. A little tip, if you'll put cocoa in your pans and instead of flour, it'll make your cake more delicious and you won't have that white powdery flour on the outside of your cake. I'm not gonna have a final picture of this cake because I'm really trying to show you what I do every week because so that you have some kind of in, you know, insight to what a homesteader's life really looks like. So I always do everything in advance. This cake was made, frozen. It will be used this coming weekend on Sunday for our birthday dinner. So on next week's video, video I should have a photo, some video footage of the final cake. Okay, Mr. Roofer is going to show you how that y'all cleaned the cow's udders back in the 50s, right? Or I guess yeah. your mother did the 40s and She 50s. didn't take a whole lot of care. Okay. Okay, he's stripping milk into his hand and rubbing the teeth with the milk. And we asked Granny yesterday just to verify, and she said she always did that. Right? Yeah. And she milked for how many years? About 80? <laughs> yeah, about 80. 75 or 80. Yeah. Okay, so that is the old fashioned way that they cleaned it. Yeah, that they used to clean their cow's udder before they milked. Kind of sort of helped let down also. No teat dips uh, or pre or post, right? She hadn't even heard of that, had she? If, there were, if the udder was really, really dirty, she might take a, a wet rag and wipe it off first if it's just super dirty. Most of the time it wasn't. When you have a homestead, chances are you're probably going to have a dairy cow. Now these are one-year-old heifers. It is very much worth your time to spend a lot of time with them. You know, just halter them, lead them, brush them. Um, just, it's a very important relationship because they are providing your family with food. So it's something you really wanna nurture and being home is important because they will see you every day if you're home and you know, just some kind of interaction daily is wonderful. It's a lot of fun also, Mr. Roofer and I really enjoy haltering the, the cows and just kind of leading them. It's kind of relaxing and fun for us. This week, um, some of my friends are celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, so I have made several loaves of challah bread. Beef tallow is so important to our family. I have been using it for, I guess, about 20 years. I use it on my skin, we eat it, we use it as a replacement for butter, pastry. 
So I keep, anytime I make bone broth, I will always have a layer of fat on the top and I always keep it. I put them in little, put it in little bowls in the freezer. And then when I feel like I have enough, I will take it out and I will start cleaning it. I do this by putting it in a, a saucepan with, again, I add water, melt it, chill it, discard the water, I do this about five times. That's with this picture. That was done five times. Okay, beef tallow here. I am rendering beef tallow. I do stay very close to the kitchen when I'm rendering beef tallow because it is so important. It is a very limited product. So I wanna make sure that I do not burn any of it. So, it's probably, I pretty much am in there looking at it every hour probably, but my slow cooker is on low and that helps. But if I do move the slow cooker to low, I have to watch it a lot more. We do have a video on how I make beef tallow. It's beautiful, it smells really good, and I think you will really love it. Cheese making is another homesteading skill that will keep you close to home. I make cheese probably three or four times a week of some kind, so I really have to plan. This cheese is ready to put in the press when it squeezes together like that and doesn't, you know, just like squeeze out of your fist, you know, real quickly. It's ready to go. I really prefer to use whole grains. One of the easiest ways I can implement whole grains into our diet is to keep a large jar of sourdough, discard or starter, whatever you wanna call it, ready to go in the refrigerator. I will feed it whatever whole grain, right here I'm making, uh, feeding it eyed corn, but I will just keep two to four cups of fed starter in this jar in the refrigerator and at a moment's notice, I can have waffles, pancakes, English muffins, or pizza. Super easy, you can rotate and change whatever kind of grains. I do that all the time. I will use spelt, einkorn, just you name it, kmoot, that's what I used last week. I just feed it what I want and it's always ready to go. So when I wake up every morning, I all the eggs from the evening before, I make sure that they are clean and in the carton and that our egg um, supply is full in the kitchen. And then probably I'd say at least three to four times a day, I go pick up the eggs. I like to get them as soon as possible. I like for them to be clean. So that involves that I am home. So I am home all the time, I, every two to three hours, I am checking on the chickens. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it'll help you. And from our Texas Hill Country Farmstead to you, have a blessed day and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.